Hey, Dr. Cloud, thanks for taking my call. You're welcome, Erin. How are you? I'm doing okay. I'm feeling kind of anxious, though. <laughs> You're feeling anxious? What are you anxious about? Yeah, feeling anxious about going home to see my parents for Christmas. Oh, is that a new, is that a new <laughs> like, feeling? Um, I think I've always felt like a little anxious, but this year feels a little more. I'm getting emotional, <laughs> but um, I'm also pregnant, so all the hormones and all the emotions go with that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, but um, last time I saw them was in the summer, and I kind of sat them down and was like. They basically fought my whole life. I'm 30. They fought bad. They yell at each other, storm out. One wouldn't come home that night. Eventually, they'd come home. So it's just been like pretty. I've just witnessed that my whole life. They've always complained yeah. to me. And then it's after reading the boundaries book and just realizing like I don't have to like put up with this. Like I don't have to put myself in that situation. So I kind of just sat them down saying, I can't handle you guys fighting in front of me. You know, you know some stuff. And basically like, please don't complain in front of me. And they understood it some somewhat, but my mom just took it like really hard or I don't know. I, she took it, I don't know how she took it, but basically she said, her response to me was, well, fine, then find a new mom. You obviously need someone better than me. <laughs> and so it was just kind of like an intense conversation. Since then yeah. we have like had conversations of, you know, somewhat trying to reconcile and just talk through it a bit, but. Oh, you did? And they've agreed. Yeah, we have talked through it a bit, but it's just, I feel like my mom still doesn't, she's somewhat in denial. She's like, well, I said that because, you know, I know you need a mom. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. It's like really destructive what you said to me, kind of a thing. But so, like, no yeah, apology well, on that, what she said. It was just, well, this is why I said it, kind of thing. Yeah. And so, well, mom, you know, I really, really don't need a new mom. I mean, I got one. Um, what I need yeah. is to be close. What I need is to be closer to the one I have, and that's what I want. And so I would feel mm -hmm. closer if you just did a couple of things. Right. Yeah. So I guess my kind of question is like, how can I like keep my anxiety down as I'm there and spending time with them? Um. Well. <laughs> uh, first of all is probably just to recognize um, you know what I would encourage you get the anxiety workshop that I did go, go to boundaries.me and, and check that out I'll have a lot of tips on there about it but, but one of the first ones um, in terms of this situation is um I want you to really kind of embrace your anxiety. Like mm -hmm. as you feel, as you feel this anxiety, where do you feel it? What does it feel like? In my chest, it feels like something heavy weighing on me. Yeah. Okay. Is mm -hmm. that most mostly the big symptom? Yeah. I mean, right now I'm like feeling like crying about it because I'm okay. like verbalizing it. Yeah, that's okay. Is that, I don't mean to be crass here, but that's not going to kill you, right? No. I mean, if we sat here for a little bit and I said, you know, so just feel it. Is that a big deal? You feel a little, little stuff in your chest. You feel a little, you know, tightness in your chest. Maybe you feel a little heart palpitation. You might feel a little sadness. Mm -hmm. Is that okay? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to die. <laughs> well, look at you now. Look you at know? you now. Just as you sat with it, now you're kind of laughing and joking with me, right? Yeah, I'm saying mm -hmm. that for a specific reason. A lot of anxiety is not the anxiety that we feel, which is anticipatory. Your system is kind of alerted. But a lot of the anxiety becomes problematic when we get anxious about being anxious. Mm-hmm. So if you could start with, okay, this is going to be a situation where I probably feel some anxiety and that's okay. Right. Let's not be afraid of that. Okay. Cause you want you yeah. name it and you're not afraid of it. 
your functioning goes up, your capacity goes up, your choices go up, your options go up, and your resiliency goes up. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. right now, right now, you probably picked up 15, 20 IQ points from just acknowledging it, right? You feel more settled, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So, so then, then begin to think about well, what am I telling myself about this? So if they start fighting, what's the stuff that goes through your head? You know, stuff like this is going to be terrible. I can't stand this. I can't cope with this. I, how am I going to, you know, all those kind of automatic thoughts. Mm -hmm. I want you to monitor those. And when you're thinking right. about it, say, well, it's not going to be terrible. I mean, I might have to go in the other room and watch Netflix or something while they duke it out. Or, you know, I might have to, you know, and, and kind of like decatastrophize this. This is not, right. this is not, this is not a rodeo you've never been to before. Right. And it didn't, it's, it's I not going to, Yeah. you're not a child, you know, it, it devastated right. you when you were a child, but you're not a child anymore. So you got to, you got to reframe this a little bit. Number two, number three, I would have a strategy. Be prepared and say, okay, if mm -hmm. they start fighting, if they start to, what am I going to do? What are my options? I could say, you know what? I'm going to let you guys kind of resolve this and I'll, I'll go, I'm going to go to the mall or I'm going to go to the other room or whatever. And, and when y'all, you know, when you want to hang out, you know, come get me or I can go call a friend or, you, you know, but have a plan that when it happens, you know how you're going to respond. Right. And get some strategies. Who's going to be your wingman? You right. My and, and so <laughs> start. Helping. Did you say your husband? Yeah. Okay. So he'll be where with you. You guys talk about this. What are we going to do when they start going nuts on us? Mm -hmm. Have a plan. See, if, you know, the Navy SEALs have this great saying, nobody ever rises to a challenge. We fall to our level of training instead. Mm. So Navy SEALs go into conflict. They can't wait to get in there. Why? Because they're prepared and they know when it comes at them what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So that. And then the other thing I would tell you is try to contain it. Figure out how you can strategically limit it. So it's not this pervasive fog throughout every moment of every crevice of every minute of every hour and all of that, but figure out how you're going to draw some limits around kind of how you can, how you can escape it, how you're going to deal with it, what you're going to say and how you can, you can kind of limit it. And fourthly, if possible, sometimes given your mom, it may not be possible. But you might talk to her and say, you know, the last, the last time I was home, um, you know, we got kind of got sideways a little bit because y'all were fighting. Well, if y'all start to have arguments or something, what do you think a good thing for me to do at that moment is? Mm, yeah, that's true. Engage her as your partner. Um, yeah. So I think that's some good. of those things, some of those things ought to help along with, you know, massive doses of eggnog or something. <laughs> find, yeah. and I, find something find I, something good in this scenario right and I think some of my I don't know anxiety comes from like I want them to have a better life and it just drives me crazy that they don't like try I don't know try more I guess and it's like I, when I did talk to them they had said yeah they agreed like marriage comes would be good and they're gonna go they went for like a month and then they stopped and I'm like I mean obviously I can't make them go but do you think is it even my place to bring it back up or is it kind of like I brought it up once and just leave it at that well I mean you can do it it's kind of, they you have just to got a real it, right? what they have to choose to, that they want it plus they need it right well, unless you're their parent, you can put them in timeout if they don't or take away their video games. I mean, obviously, yeah, yeah they got to, <laughs> <laughs> you don't have any leverage here. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so you've kind of got, um, you live in, in uh, Seattle, is that right? Yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, is it raining up there today? Um, I'm sure it has been. I don't think it is at the moment. All That's right. not raining but now. <laughs> might it might it rain sometime in the next handful of days? Yeah, definitely. What if you woke up every morning saying, I'm going to tell it not to rain. It shouldn't rain. I don't know why it has to rain here. You would think this place would want a little sunshine. You might have yeah. incompatible incompatible wishes. And that's yeah. a loss. Like, I want to live in Seattle right. and I want the sun to shine every day. Those don't go together. Okay. So, you know, I got these parents and I want them to be something they're not. And as long as I hang on to that wish, I'm going to be frustrated. But if I accept them mm. as they are and realize I live in Seattle, I got an idea. Maybe I'll take an umbrella with me because mm-hmm. it's probably going to rain. Mm-hmm. I just think, I just think, can you suggest it again? Try it. Try it. You can. But I mean, it's only been going on 30 something years. Good luck. Right. I mean, do you think that's an adult child's place to bring that up? Or is it kind of like, I don't know. I guess that's where I struggle with it. It's not. I don't want to it's not feel from the well, it, it's. I would make it more, if I was going to bring it up, I'd make it more about me. I'd say, yeah. you know what? I get sad for you guys sometimes. It kind of breaks my heart a little bit that this is how y'all. This is how y'all keep going. It makes me sad that you don't go get some help. Just express your feelings. That's not controlling. Mm. I really would like to yeah. see something better for y'all. I hope y'all do that. I really hope you do right. that. You can do it that way. Yeah. But, but I'd carry a ring. Yeah. <laughs> get ready for the backlash. Go go take a look at the anxiety seminar if you want to. It'll give you a lot of, a lot of tips for this. Yeah. That's good. Yep, that's helpful. Thank you, Doctor Cloud. Okay. Um, what a uh, what a great daughter. <laughs> I'm serious. I, I mean, don't know. You, well, I do. I mean, you're you're loving them enough to go. You're wanting the best for them. You're going to go through a little brain damage to go make a visit. Pretty honoring. <laughs> just don't get just don't get hurt in the process. And you can come out of there with realizing, keep the why in front of you. Why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing it because I love my parents. And, you know, it's not going to be a little bit of a bumpy ride, but keep that why, that purpose in front of you. And that'll that'll help take you through it too. And then feel good about living in accordance with your values. I couldn't fix them, but I went to see them. Well done, good and faithful servant. In as much as one of my favorite verses, in as much as it depends on you, Paul said, be at peace with everyone. You can't control this, but you can be the best you can be when you're there. And not get hurt in the process. Yeah. Yeah. All right? All right. Sounds good. You sure? Yeah. I'm just, I know a lot of this is also goes to hormones, you know? (laughs) I cry all the well, time these days. <laughs> great. I mean, it's a great awareness. I'm sorry. I mean, but you might go in and say that. Hey, guys, um, this is a little different visit. I I got this. I'm eating for two here. And I got this this <laughs> alien inside of me. And I might I might have I might have to leave the room. I might start crying because we run out of mac and cheese. I'm going to be a little unpredictable. <laughs> so kind of cut me some slack here. I would say that. And that that would give you some kind of some from free space to play. 